Come on. Let's be positive. Just stop right there. No negativity. Let's be positive. LBP. Let's be positive. LBP, let's be positive. Mate, what happened to the power? You're, you're next to all the hydro lakes. You don't have power cuts down there? No, I don't know. They're working on power poles and, you know, upgrading equipment. And, and honestly, look, I'd like to blame them because they've just cut the power off this morning. But maybe I read the info wrong. You know what I mean? Maybe it was me and maybe it was always today, but I thought it was next Monday. Anyway, I've had to run around and shut everything down and then start everything up and get a generator going and got to keep the radio twizzle frequency pumping out to the people. There's nothing else to do in town today. Okay, living in a place like Twizel is it imperative and essential that you have your own generator? Is that everyone has one, do they? Oh, normally these people that live in town, they don't have generators. But the radio station's always got to back up. You've got to keep the radio going, right? Mm. I've got two generators. I'm always ready for power to be cut but yeah look i mean i just say to anyone if uh if you think about losing power for a couple of days and all the money you got wrapped up in your freezer and fridge and all the things you do around home that require a little bit of power or even charging your laptop to do some work a little generator goes a long way Mark. yeah yeah it goes a long way maybe not eco-friendly you know what I'm saying? You you are burning a little bit of petrol to get the power, but it keeps your life on hold, and at least you don't have to go to the landfill and throw out all your food. Let's talk sport and be positive about Henry Nichols, who got off a charge of tampering with the ball, but we've been talking about this all day, mate. And the thing that gets me, and I still, I still need an answer just to resolve it in my own head, is what the hell was he doing exactly? Because what the inquiry says, Matt, is that what he was doing didn't change the shape of or the performance or the constitution of the ball. But that also says he was doing something. So what what was he doing and why would he be doing it? Well, it looked like, because the, the footage, the footage, I, I mean, when I first started to look at it, I couldn't quite work out what I was seeing, but it looks like he's banging one side of the ball onto a helmet. Yeah. And yeah. maybe that's just to rough it up a little bit or change the shape on one side. Wanting the ball to swing, obviously, Swing comes from when one side of the ball is smoother than the other. You know the aerodynamics of a cricket ball. Well, it looks like he was trying to manipulate the ball. And the fact is is that the investigation seemed to confirm that at least he was trying to manipulate yeah, yeah, the ball, that's it. Yeah. even though the inquiry found that it didn't work. Well, doesn't that mean that you've actually still done it, though, by definition? Well, 100%. I mean, I would have thought... It was the intent yeah. that is important here and not necessarily the outcome. You were drunk, you get in your car, you drive, you didn't get caught, you were still drunk driving. That, that, that's, that's the deal, isn't it? You were, you were doing something to the ball, it, 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 it didn't work, but you were still doing something to the ball. And what I don't get is, Henry Nichols is so vastly experienced, why would you risk that? He didn't look like he even tried to cover up what he was doing, like... The video footage that you sent me was from the changing room of the opposition side. Yeah. And they could see it clearly. Very. I mean, so so what's he actually thinking? Um, does he think that in a match like that, no one has the ability to record what he's doing? Because we all know you can't go anywhere without something being recorded. We know this at sports matches. I mean, you've got the coverage that the TV companies do but how often do you see other footage that isn't caught from people in the crowd That's it. you can't do anything yeah confusing isn't it eh? and i just think you know as i say it's still unresolved as far as i'm concerned all right let's be positive though at least it wasn't two australian cricketers doing it because it'd be a worldwide scandal if that was the case well i would have just been a kind of comment where here we go again typical australian cricketers trying to manipulate the ball and i've hardly heard anyone say anything about this particular incident, even though it's in a pretty insignificant competition in the minds of many, I suppose, these days. But look, the intent is the intent. This is the thing. The outcome doesn't matter. We know that with, say, a head clash or a shoulder going up around the face in rugby, you don't have to knock the bloke out or injure him, but it's the incident that counts. And so to think that 
you would only be suspended or in trouble, so to speak, if the outcome goes your way, seems like it uh, totally flies in the face of the rules of the game, or as the English would say, Marty, the spirit of cricket. There you go. Speaking of, I reckon that we're going to upset India in that semi-final. Are you going to do the same to South Africa? Well, that probably wouldn't be that much of an upset. No, I, I, I don't think so. I've been um, sort of perusing. Um, India 9 from 9 won't be easy to beat, but New Zealand have put on a couple of very big scores. Potentially, if they bat first, put on a big score. Yeah, that's what I think, yeah. Same. Got I think that first. that's going to be the key. Yeah. I mean, India are clear favourites in that match, but Australia are slight favourites against South Africa. Um, New Zealand 401 and 383. Australia's put on a number of big totals. In fact, between South Africa and Australia, more than seven totals over 350, and they actually went over 400 too. So we could see some big scoring, but I think, I think a semi-final cricket, World Cup, bat first. Bat first, bat first. Bat first, bat first, bat first. Matt, is Australian Rugby and League about to enter a, another cross-code finger-pointing player poaching war? Mark Nawakwanatawasi, the Wallaby fullback, rumoured to be going to the Roosters. So rugby stole Joseph Swali and they're going to steal one back. And now the clubs, the NRL clubs apparently, are in talks to rewrite the rules and say that if you actually get somebody from rugby, well, then they don't come under the salary cap. So we've seen this, haven't we, decade after decade after decade. Is it erupting again? Well, if you start making moves to give clubs a clear gateway to bring players in and not affect the salary cap, you would have to jump to the conclusion that 100% yes, and that there will be... Um, a push by any club trying to sneak good players into or under their salary cap, right? I mean, that, 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 that just seems like a ridiculous idea to start with. There's a salary cap for a reason. And if you can bring a world-class player from another code in, which doesn't count, I mean, how fair is that to the players that are actually still playing and can't get paid more because of the salary cap? Yeah, good point. You know, I mean, oh, look, I don't really care about fairness, but it would seem that if you set yourself up that way, that there must be some intent to do it. And, you know, it's not even surprising, given the state of Australian rugby, you know, given how they've performed in recent times where it sits, why wouldn't you start offering players options? I mean, it just seems like the way forward doesn't always work. League to rugby, rugby to league, but sometimes it does work. And sometimes the name itself draws a bit of a crowd, although Roger wasn't able to do that at all. Yeah, that's when a good point. He made the change the other way around, but we'll see how he goes this year. Yeah, it's definitely going to be on. Why else would you set yourself up to be able to do it for free? Finally, we find out that Adam Fanua Blake has been courted by another club. This is no surprise. We spoke about this last Monday, that all of a sudden out comes the compassionate clause leave, and then all of a sudden, no, next day he wants to stay, and both of us were very suspicious that the manager's pulling a swifty here and that someone else has stepped in with a big offer, and so convenience says, well, I'll pull the clause out, and then the Warriors give him more money. I mean, I'm just connecting dots in my own brain here. Could be a conspiracy theory. But now that the news that St. George and the Tongan-based players there have been at him to, to, uh, to jump clubs... I mean, again, it's a smoke with fire thing, doesn't it? These things just don't happen out of nowhere. A guy just doesn't get a whim and go, I've got to go back to Sydney. I've got to go back. I've got to move back to mum and dad. I've got to, oh, hang on a second. No, I don't. I mean, the, 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 the whole thing needs an explanation, doesn't it? But we deserve well, it. Well, I actually, I actually thought I read a couple of weeks ago that he was potentially talking to the Bulldogs. Right. Okay. Well, he's obviously given you the short shaft, hasn't he? I mean, because obviously St. George have come in with an even better offer than the dogs. It doesn't take long, does it? Someone makes him available on paper, and then next thing you know, everyone wants to uh, make the change. I mean, look, we've talked about this many, many times with players coming and going. Regardless of contracts, regardless of how many years are on the, on the dotted line, it doesn't matter anymore. I mean, money is what talks. If he's going to go, he's going to go. Be a big loss. I'd say the Warriors, I don't know if they can afford to keep him. Well, I don't know if they you can know, like, replace him either. I mean, the, these guys are the, you know, these guys are the meter eaters in the NRL. I mean, you can have all the playmakers you want, but they don't go nowhere, do they? Unless you get a couple of guys like that who are consistent. And and he didn't play well in the playoffs, but during the competition, regular season, 24 games, I mean, he was the best player on the park for most of those games. And so, yeah, 
I don't know if any player is irreplaceable, but he's right at the top of the very nearly list if there is one. Well, I mean, after the way we saw the club roll this year, you would have thought that everyone they could hang on to that performed, they'd want to hang on to. And he was a terrific player all year. No, not everyone played that well in the playoffs. That happens sometimes. But uh, a big loss up forward. As you know, the Warriors have always been good with a good forward pack. And so you start to lose them. Who do you bring in at this point? Because there's a lot of movement already undertaken in terms of good NRL players. The Bulldogs have picked up a few good players. There's been transfers left, right and centre. I mean, what you can read from this is, unless the Warriors come out with a massive offer, he's gone, Burger. Well, just keep plugged in, pal. Just keep plugged in. That's all I can say. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. I know. What a pain in the ass. And then <laughs> I went and had a look out there and I thought, oh, this is going to need a bit more petrol. I've been going since, I don't know, 8 o'clock or something. I come in here to get some work done early. Next thing you know, the power just goes off. <laughs> the bloke's running around in high-vis everywhere. <laughs> Madness. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. You, just, no. you just sit there and you just sing. It's just something that you expect to turn the tap on. You expect to flick the switch. You just don't expect them not to work, do you? I know that there's several no. countries around the world, but this is the luxury we have of living in New Zealand. And the absolute inconvenience when you go, mate, I got stuck in the lift last week, right? And it just, I mean, it only goes down a floor. I suppose, I suppose so I should take the bloody stairs. <laughs> the thing hasn't been fixed for a week. It's got a sign on it saying they'll be back tomorrow, but that was last Tuesday. And you said you said you know, I was lucky I got I my arm through the door because when I rang, this is the best bit of it all, mate. When I rang the emergency number, they said, "Oh, we we were experiencing high call numbers at the moment. Just can you hold on?" I was sitting in the lift going, "The lift's broken. I'm stuck." Okay, <laughs> you got to wait. How You're long does that take? What does that mean? Of course, you can hang on, but how long are you? Need? We've we've got we've got big interest at the moment. Like they've all broken down, have they? <laughs> I looked on the map for the power cuts and they just have a, put an arrow in the middle of Twizel and say we're cutting it off there. But it doesn't tell you if your street's been cut off, where's been cut off. School's closed. All the shops are closed. The people walking around, no one's got cash anymore. There's no power to the ATM, so there's no cash coming out of the money machine. It's pandemonium.